right, that one's up. That one's up. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, welcome, Stephanie. Welcome, Lee. Let's see who else I can see in here. Stephanie and Lee and Sarah. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we're going to be talking about holiday gift tags. It's that time of year. And I did it last year, and people were pretty psyched about the way I did it last year. This year, I'm going to do it a little differently, where we get to actually customize the names on the tag so that you don't have to write them out by hand. Although, writing them out by hand is okay. It's actually a very personal way to do it. Uh, but I've got an automated way to do it, especially if you got more than a few to write out. So let's uh, dive in and take a look. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my computer so you guys can see that. And uh, what I've got going on my computer, hey, Cr Crimson Rising and George, what's going on, everybody? I, had a, um, I have the Adobe Stock website up, and this is for the design challenge. <laughs> this is for the people that say, I don't even want to wait. I, I don't even have the skills or the time to design the tag itself. This has nothing to do with personalization. You can, of course, design your own tags. But if you don't know how to design your own tags, or maybe you want some inspiration, uh, just go to stock.adobe.com and uh, type in holiday gift tag. I guess tags or tags, or plural would have been fine. And that will bring up a bunch of different stock tags. Now, what I was looking for is all of these look great. There's no, no complaints about any of them. But what I was looking for were ones like this where they were laid out and they uh, had room at the bottom of each one to write the two in the from or just at least the two. Uh, so I kind of scroll down like these would work, but I would have to do a little bit more customization to them uh, to make them uh, to give that space for the name. Uh, what else here? Uh, these would work. It's just not enough of them on a page. So I'd have to duplicate a lot of them. Plus the ribbon doesn't really help me because I'd have to cut that out. <laughs> These are great because you can just stick them on. You can print them on like um, a label paper, like a full sheet of label. Uh, they sell actually eight and a half by 11 in the U.S. Uh, Avery sells an actual sheet that's a label. So you can print them out on that and then cut them out and just stick them on. But I ended up, I think, going with these. These were kind of like the closest to what I was looking for. Plus they have a little tag shape. But again, this part is just because I didn't feel like designing the whole thing from scratch. If you got the skills, you got the time, by all means, go design your own. Uh, once I downloaded that stock image, let me swap, switch over to InDesign. I actually opened it up in Illustrator. Actually, I can go ahead and do that. Let's open it up in Illustrator. Double click. That'll open it up in Illustrator. And I'll show you what I did to it there. Uh, so this is this is a, this is after I've tweaked it a little bit. Uh, so I open it up in Illustrator and give it a second or two, and it'll open here. And once it opens, there we go. Uh, so I got rid of the box. Um, I put my own name for, in the from. I left more space for the two person. And uh, I cropped into just the tags themselves. This this particular this particular stock item had it was on a big page all by or a big artboard all by itself. It also had a color background that was unnecessary, so I got rid of the background, did all that, and then selected the whole thing and added it to my library, my CC library. Okay, so once I got my tag set, and again, you can go in and customize any of the stuff that you want. That's the whole point. Make it whatever you want. Once I got my tag set and then put my library eight up on a page, the next thing we're going to do is talk about the actual customization part. So in other words, as you can guess, I want to, I want the computer to fill in the two part. Like on each one of those tags, I want my gift recipient to have their name on it. So that just makes it all custom. So how am I going to do that? First, I got to give the computer the names. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to do that actually in a spreadsheet. Doesn't matter which spreadsheet it is because you're not going to actually use the spreadsheet format. You're going to type the names in a spreadsheet and then you're going to save that out as a tab delimited file. I'm going to do that in just a minute because I added some more names. But what you're going, what you have to do is put each name or each item, each record, whatever each um, uh, field in a separate column. And you also the first thing, the first line has to be 
the names of the fields. So first, last, address, phone number, birth date, whatever you're going to put in there, you got to put those actual names across the top because you're going to need that when you get over to InDesign. So then once you put your, your names of your fields across the top, then you just go ahead and fill in the name. So I put in, uh, looks like 19 names, so a nice uneven number. Originally, I had only done eight for the eight tags, but people would ask, well, what happens when you have more than eight? So that's why I put in more than eight. And this could be, uh, in my case, 19. It could be 900. It could be 9,000. It doesn't matter how many names you have. That's what makes this so cool. Now, if you're only giving out gifts to two people, probably easier just to go ahead and type the names in Illustrator or InDesign and be done with it. But if you're giving out to more than a few, and you don't, you don't see your name on the list. All right, that was a good one. Just for you, Antoinette Frey. Now you're on the list. All right, <laughs> so that, was, that was good. That was a quick classic shout out. Hey, I don't see my name. Uh, anyway, now that now we got all our names in. Uh, and again, the, the the length or how how many names you have is irrelevant. Um, more, if it's just a couple, might as well do it manually. But if it's more than a couple, that's where this comes in. All right. So now once I got all my names in, so now I've got 20 because the first one's the field. So 21 means I've got 20 names. I'm going to go ahead and save it first, save it as Excel, just in case I ever want to go back to this. And then next I'm going to do a save as, and in the format, we're not going to save it as Excel. We're going to save it as a tab delimited file. So this is a file format then that all spreadsheets should be able to save out to. Um, some will save out to both tab and comma delimited um, com and both will work, but I have better success with tab delimited. Like this never gives me a problem where sometimes comma can give me a problem, especially if the person's name has got a comma in it, like um, uh, Coster Jr, comma Jr. So, it's just safer to do tabs. So tab delimited file, that's just gonna create a text file. I'm gonna save it to the same folder. So it's called names 2018, it'll be dot text. And we'll save it out. It's gonna say, hey, you wanna replace the old one? Yes, I do. And that's it, that's all you need it. And yes, I know. That's all you need it from the spreadsheet, just a place to type all the names. Now we're gonna head over to InDesign. And in InDesign, this is where we're gonna build our document. With those gift tags that I customized from Illustrator, we're going to pull in those names that we did in Excel and have it put it all together in a nice, neat package that we can then print. So first and foremost, we're going to create a new document. So I'm doing this all from scratch. New document, and the new document is going to be an 8.5 by 11. So we're going to jump over to print. Letter size. We're here in the U.S. We're using U.S. letter. I'm going to make it wide. I'm going to say no facing pages. It's not a book. It doesn't need facing pages. And for the margins, this is where you're going to put in whatever the margins your printer supports because you're going to print these out. So I think my printer can go all the way to a quarter inch around the edge. Some of your printers might do borderless, so you could put a zero in. But whatever your printer handles, like the, the minimum margin to the edge of the sheet of paper, that's what you want to put in the margins. And some have a top margin that's or a side left side margin that's different than the rest where it needs a little bit more space to grip the paper and pull it into the printer. So go check your printer, see what the specs are. All right, so now that we got my uh, wide document, eight and a half by 11, uh, quarter inch margins all the way around, it's just gonna create a blank page like that one. And we're gonna do one thing that will make this work better. Uh, I'll show you when we get to it why this was important, but you want to put your labels, your artwork, whatever it is you're putting these names on, on the master page. You don't want to put them on the regular document page. Because if you put them on a regular document page, which normally you would, the feature for data merge can get screwed up by objects being in the way of what it's trying to do. So the safest place I found to do this is on the master page. All right, so I'm going to go to my Pages panel, switch to my A Master, just double click on it. Now I'm working on the A Master page. Then I can go to my CC library and I can drag over those tags that I put in the library from Illustrator. I'm just going to put them with, place them within the margin. They will not line up perfectly because I didn't do that much setup in Illustrator to make it line up perfectly. But uh, here, we'll, we'll get it down to the edge of the margin. There we go. 
and they will come in and they will be like that. Now, I did not space them out proportionally to the size of the paper, so that's gonna be an issue a little later. We'll see why that's an issue. But because we put that on the master page now, we should be all set to go back to our regular document page because we put that on the master, so therefore it's gonna be on every page. So we double click back on page one, that's it. We can put the pages panel away because now this is on the master. That means I can't pick it up. I can't move it. I can't disturb it in any way. It's on the master page and it's out of data merges way. All right, next up. So, so far, quick recap. You designed your labels, your tags in whatever you want. Get them from stock, make your own, whatever you want to do. Put them on the master page so they're out of the way. Go to your spreadsheet program, type all your names in, make sure you put the field names in first, first, last, address, birth date, whatever, and save that out as a tab delimited file. Now the magic happens. So what do we do next? We're in InDesign, we go up to our window menu, come down to a, a section you probably never ever go to, utilities, and go over to data merge, a panel you probably never ever bring up. Because data merge, I'm going to date myself here. Data merge goes all the way back to PageMaker. So it's been in InDesign since day one. It goes all the way back to before InDesign. It was a feature that we were using way back in the day where people were doing things in spreadsheets and databases. All right, but anyway, it brings up this uh, field or this, this panel. I'm going to go ahead and close the rest. I don't need the rest. Brings up the data merge panel, and in the data merge panel, it's even telling you step by step what to do. So the first step, it says, choose your data source from the data source menu. That's where we're gonna go get that tab delimited file that we saved out earlier. So I'm gonna go grab that. It's in my holiday gift tags folder, and there it is, names 2018, the one we just worked on today. All right, open that up. And voila, it now knows there's a first name and a last name and how, ma how many ever records there are in this file. 20, how many ever there are. 2,000, how many ever tags you need. Now, in order to use that first name and last name field, we need to have a text frame to put them in. So I'm gonna grab my type tool and I'm just gonna come over here and drag out a frame about where I want the name to be. So right about there, I'm not gonna make it too wide Oh, uh, yeah, right about there. Okay, so now that I've got that text field, I can come over here and just click first name. Boom, and it adds first name. Now, of course, you would probably, if you wanted it to just say to, you know, John Smith, you would do first name, hit the space bar, and then go click on last name. That would make sense. But I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to style mine in such a way to where I hit return and then put the last name in. And I see the fonts wrong. I had to go fix my default font. Somehow I ended up with Proxima Nova Black Italic as my default font. Uh, I got to go fix that when we're done. But anyway, I'm going to highlight that because that's not the font I want. I want Lush Script instead. So we're going to go Lush Script. There we go. Because that's the same font as the rest of this. And because I've got first name and last name on the next line, I just want to make first name bigger. This is why I did it so that they would be on separate lines. So it would be John Smith, Joanne Jones, so forth and so on. So the last name is not important because usually if it's a gift, you probably don't even need the last name because they know who you are, but just in case. Or they know who they are. But maybe there's two Joshes in the family. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever it is. All right. So first name big, last name small on the next line. And that's pretty much it. Now here's the problem. If you were to print this right now, you would get a sheet of paper coming out of your printer with the first person's name on it. Then another sheet of paper coming out of the printer with the second person's name on it. In other words, the other seven labels would not get used if we were to leave it the way it is right now. So here comes the trick. This is why you watch me. This is why you watch my videos. This is why you watch the stream every week because you get to learn something that you probably wouldn't figure out too easily on your own. And that is... We want to create a data merge document that uses multiple records. So we go to the flyout menu. And by the way, you would need to do this if you were printing one name per page, like it was a giant label or 
a bunch of fields that fill in a form and it was a different form per page, then you're all set. But in the case where we actually need it to fill in those other seven labels, we're gonna to go to the data merge flyout menu and we're gonna come down to create merged document. When we create merged document, this is where we're gonna change it from single record to multiple records. This means put as many records on the page as will fit, unless we tell it otherwise. So if I go to multiple records and I click preview, it's gonna throw you at first because it's gonna put all the names and everything at the top if it works right. And there it is, <laughs> it did it. It put all 20 names at the top just coming in order down the page. They look great and they're in the right font, they look good, but that's not what we want. We want them laid out on the actual labels. Well, it doesn't know that there are labels there. It doesn't know that's what you're trying to do. So you got to go in and space it out. So the way we space it out, you click on the very next tab, click on multiple record layout, and this is where the magic happens, where you get to space things out, move them over, tell it how many columns, so forth and so on. So it's just doing the same margins as the document. So I'm going to say start three inches from the top. All right, so I got the... Oh, by the way, we want to un hold on, hold on, undo. Let's go back to 0.25. You want to uncheck this link. In other words, we don't want the same measurement in all four boxes. So that's why it moved down three inches and over three inches. And I didn't want that. I just want it three inches from the top. So now when I put in a three, it leaves the quarter inch all the way, all the way around because I did not link the setting. All right, next up, I want the left margin. I, I don't know, maybe, um, maybe 0 0.75, 0 0.75, let's see. Yeah, that's about right. Maybe uh, back it up a little bit and maybe it can go a little higher than three inches down. All right, cool. So now the first one is where I want it to be. The rest are not. So this is where the next section comes in, the spacing. Space between the columns, which are the ones going across that way. Space between the rows, which are the ones going down. So space between the columns, I don't know. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm just going to keep hitting up on this number until it moves it over far enough. A little more, a little more, a little more. Okay. Maybe not so much for the second one. Great. Now for the rows. Well, it needs to come way down here. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the up arrow until it moves it down far enough. And if you know the measurement, like, for example, maybe I can go over to the ruler. That should just really be at seven, just to save myself time. Oh, but that's not space. But that's not seven inches between each row. So it would be from here to maybe three inches. Let's try three. A little more. So in other words, if you know the exact measurement, you can just type it in. You don't have to eyeball it like I'm doing. All right, so there it is. I've got my labels all labeled, my, my tags all labeled. And you'll notice that it actually did a pretty good job in this case. But um, depending on how big you make this frame, you could be off on your spacing. So when I tried this earlier, by the time it got to my last column, my last column was way over from the two, which it was it was still within reason, but it was further over than the rest because that frame is being proportionally spaced over three more times. So if that frame is not a good size, then it's just going to create a bigger problem down the road. All right, but everything looks good. So at this point,